In the previous video we talked about how to use filters to color code walls that have different fire ratings. You can check out that video if you want to learn more about that. In this video we'll talk about using different pattern types to define it. So I have a one hour wall type here. As I grab it you'll see it says that's one hour. And when I hit this guy you'll notice that it says it's a two hour and they're color coding appropriately using filters. Visibility graphics, filters. Here we go. Now what we're going to do is talk about using certain patterns or loading custom patterns to make these look better. There are some little caveats. Um, when you're running fine and medium, they don't they kind of they get a little squirrely. So whether you're either one that you're using, the two two the two ways I'll show you in a moment, you want to run coarse. It'll make it work better. Now let's take a look first of all at the filtering. The filtering gives you the ability to quickly change a line type throughout the project once and it redoes all the walls. So it's more of a global setting. So if I want to make the patch pattern a little tighter or a little looser, um, or if you want to change it, you can hit five or six different wall types at once because it's using a filter instead of a wall type. So we'll start with the filters, which is a little bit more intense, and then we'll go back to the actual walls. Both ways work, it's just a personal preference. So since we set up the filters in the previous one, I'm going to go VV, filters, and you'll see in here I have a solid pattern. The patterns, solid patterns aren't going to work very well if I print black. They're both going to show up as a, a dark black pattern. So I'm going to actually change these out with a new pattern type. If I drop this down, notice the generic patterns that are in Revit are pretty bland. So we want to create our own. Cancel. Now, I could hit this little three dot that goes right to the fill patterns. Or cancel, cancel, and cancel. I'll go directly up here to additional settings, fill patterns. Both of these work, and I'll be using a drafting style, so it, it'll the, it'll adjust the scaling based on the annotation scale here. I'm gonna hit new. If you want to create a pattern from scratch, you can do it two ways. Number one, you give it a name and then put this information in, and you get a very stand uh, simple simple pattern. If you want something a little bit more robust, hit the custom button and import a pattern, uh, a PAT file. Those are used in AutoCAD and other applications. So I hit import and you'll see I have an FLA one hour. I click on it, I hit open. What's happening here, you'll see it's loading the pattern up and it's showing me what it's going to look like in the box. Now what I want to do is I want to say not orientate to view, but I want to orientate to the element. So align with element. So what that's going to do, the name is one hour, it actually sucked it out of the pattern name. And then I want to verify the scale. You may want to up this or down this as you bring them in. Once you bring it in, you can't change it. So you'll have to pretty much delete the hatch pattern, come back, and hit it again. But that's really where you can refine it if you don't like how it's coming directly from the PAT file. I hit OK on that, and I had this new one hour in here. Now I hit OK, and that was pretty easy. Let me go do the two hour real quick. Additional settings, fill patterns. I want a new pattern. At this time, I'm going to find a custom pattern. I'm going to import it, and I got two hour pat. I hit open. At this point, fires up and you'll see it loading up right now, it's reading the file. I'm going to say orient to the object or align with object. I'm happy with the scale. I hit OK. So you now notice I have two separate um, hatch patterns in here. I hit OK. So that's how quickly we can load these patterns in. Now if you are using the filters, VV, we'll go now and just tell the filters to use a different pattern. So the pattern we'll be using in this instance, instead of solid, I'll say you're a one hour, so use the one hour pattern. Hit OK. You are two hour, so use the two hour pattern. Now it's going to go squirrely on us, but don't panic. I hit OK. I hit OK. Notice how they're they're, they're looking to be just fine. Let's say I got a one tick. I got two ticks. I'm like beautiful. If you set this to fine, notice it's kind of squirreling out on us. It's it's aligning with more with the actual um, screen and not with the actual um, align with myth, alignment with items. So you want to run course to make that happen. So with running course, let this beautiful thing. So just remember that. So if you have a view template, if you've set up a view template, remember to have it remember this information. In the previous video we created a view template. I'll create it again for this one. I'm going to right click. I'm going to tell Revit to create a view template based on this view. I'm going to call this, let's say, uh, wall ratings. And the naming convention is up for you. Is up to you. Uh, wall fire ratings. That way we know what it is. I hit OK. Now I've got the one from four is, before was fire rating color code. This is wall fire ratings. I'm going to uncheck every box except two. I'm going to come back and check.
check them in a moment. The first one is going to be filters. That's the one we want to leave unchecked because we want it to pick up the filters. But we don't want to mess up any other things in the view. So if I want to use this even on a reflected ceiling plan, I want to use it uh, in any, any floor plan. It's not going to turn categories on and off. Notice. It's not going to turn annotation on and off. It's not going to mess with anything else. All it's going to do is turn on the filters and we're going to take the display and switch it to course. That way we're locking it down and we'll be good to go. Boop. We'll try that out now. I'm going to go to another plan, see if anything's in here. There it is. Structure plan. Uh, I'm going to right click, apply template properties, and I say while fire rating I hit OK. Notice it instantly color codes those walls. Easy breezy, good to go. Now some other people say, well, is there an, another way I can use it? You say, I'm not so I'm not so keen on filters. That's fine. This this next way is just as easy, and it might be easier if you're new to Revit. I'm going to go grab this wall, and I'm going to go ahead and edit type, and I'm going to duplicate the wall. Now let's say I just call this one. This is a we'll say this is an interior, um, and I'm going to say wall, and I'm going to put two hour. I just made a new wall type, right? nothing special there and I'm gonna go over here and in this instance I'm not gonna use filters let's go ahead and hit OK on that so I made a new wall type you'll notice that it is actually when I CS it and draw some more it's already picking up that um, that pattern because the filters are running I'll go VV in this view and I'm gonna kill the filters remove them remove them so let's say you're not into filters you're like, I'm not into filters can are there the easy ways to do this um, easy I don't know that's up that's gonna be your call but there's two ways to do it both of them work okay um, I grab this wall and when I hit edit type see I have the ability to tell Revit that whenever I'm using this two hour wall I personally I'm not gonna tell Revit just to go check the uh, fire rating I'm going to come here and say whenever I'm using an interior two hour wall, I personally come in here and say use the two hour pattern when it's coarse. See? Coarse scale fill pattern. Cool. Coarse scale fill color. So by setting these, now we use a little bit different color. I'm telling Revit whenever you see this wall type and I'm running coarse to use this pattern and this color. I hit OK and notice perfect so I can quickly tell the the walls here some other tricks that people do uh, of that may be of interest maybe you don't call uh, color code them for fire rating here but I've seen this in a project before I thought it was quite uh, quite impressive you have partition types one through however many what someone did was they went to the partition types once they were named let's see I added type here um, and they renamed it so this is a one hour and they made they put uh, let's say PT1 go ahead and cat blocks this PT1. So that's petition type 1. Now they were coming from the AutoCAD world. So what they did was they said fill pattern. They hit it here and they told it to use a solid color. Now if you've come from the AutoCAD world, 1 is red, right? So they said make it red. Hit OK. So now when they're working in their world, what they would do is they'd say, OK, if I go to course, Revit color codes of petitions to match the kind of the line colors in AutoCAD. So I know that's a one. That's petition type one because I quickly can note in my head one is a red in AutoCAD and it's a white. So I'd have yellow would be two, green would be uh, three. So I could quickly take a plan that has lots of petition types in it and switch it and I quickly color code it. So now I know what I'm looking at. And it was just an easy way that someone had done this was on a complicated hospital project and they had lots of wall types so they could quickly switch and uh, just visually audit the whole plan and verify that everything was correct and then they went back to medium and everything went back to normal so it's a quick way uh, and quite impressive that they could uh, audit the wall types um, easily so there you go those are two ways um, to color code your walls uh, fire rating or just a color code for petition types or any other any other type of noting to make things happen I hope you enjoyed the tip of the week. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a call. Check us out on the web, therevitguys.com, thebimguys.com, or cadtechseminars.com. Thank you. We do support, training, and consultation for Revit.